Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Holy Father, we pray for the and want to say thanks for the water that you've sent to us and we're asking you to help us out by sending us more water. We want to pray for the county supervisors that consider the agenda today, for the careful consideration on the proposed casino, for common sense in all people as we consider the impact on law enforcement, fire protection, emergency medical services asking the Lord to guide us through the process to provide the monies to all the agencies for law, fire, and medical. Also for a new prison as we're overcrowded and our prison is way too small. To consider monies for counseling to help change the lives of the, some of the people in our community. O oh Lord, a governor whose glory is in all the world, we commend Siskiyou County to thy merciful care. And being guided by the providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to all in authority, wisdom, and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with all the love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of thy calling to serve the people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So before we begin, the chair would like to recognize we have a uh, Jackson County Commissioner in the audience today who's been trying to get to one of our board meetings for several years and just had the opportunity today because his board did not meet, uh, Commissioner John Raker. Thank you. Very much. And just uh, so the public will have an idea of um, how we're going to proceed, uh, we will uh, be our county staff will have a presentation. We'll be going to the, the group tribe for uh, their presentation, and then we'll go to public comment. Um, public comment will be limited to three minutes each, um, and there will be, are there, are there out there too, Wendy? Yes, yeah, okay. on the table. They're on the back counter. We'll need your name um, on that so that you can submit it to the clerk for the record. With that, we'll go to uh, County Administrator uh, Tom Odin. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Louder. I guess it helps if I turn it on. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the staff will make a presentation. Basically, uh, County Council and the Community Development uh, Director will give um, uh, the public and the board a um, brief background on the travel uh, gaming and the process for the new casino. And, um, at that point, we'll turn it back over to you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, good morning to the representatives from the Brew Tribe and uh, to the members of the public who have joined us here today. We're just going to start with a brief presentation uh, on some background on the casino to give everyone a, a common point of reference on what uh, the involvement here is for the Siskiyou County Board of Supervisors. Uh, and the county role in the casino process. I was happy that he gave me a job I could do, but I didn't tell him I could do it well. <laughs> also, I should mention that Supervisor Armstrong is ill today, she, so she will be absent. Um, <coughs> While um, you're getting that set up, Mr. Morris, or is it would the group representatives like to introduce themselves while we're doing that? Oh, here we go. Go ahead. We'll go ahead. We'll go. go ahead. Good morning, everyone. I'm Michael Thompson, the vice chair of the group tribe. Ravi Key, I'm Jacqueline Goodwin, the self governance coordinator for the Cook tribe. My name is Scott Quinn, I'm the land manager with the Cook tribe. And Trent Wilson, Marvel Rinsold for the group tribe. Thank you. Okay, it's back to you. I think we're underway. Uh, just to give an overview of what we're going to present, we will start with 
uh, a, a general review of the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, which is the federal law we're operating under here. Uh, then a description of the casino process in general, uh, the specific proposal for the casino here in Wairika, and then the role of Siskiyou County. Can I ask, could you please go back to the first one and explain where exactly the casino is going to be? We'll, we'll get to that when we talk about the proposal. Okay, thank you. So the, the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act was enacted by Congress in 1988. Uh, this is the federal law that uh, regulates casino gaming by Indian tribes. Uh, essentially in the, in the 1970s and early 1980s, uh, there were conflicts that were beginning to develop between uh, tribes and state governments regarding who had authority over Indian gaming. So this law was uh, passed by Congress uh, in response to some of those concerns. <coughs> Go ahead. So for the casino process, uh, the first step is to identify eligible land. Uh, there are different types of land that can be used uh, for casinos by Indian tribes. Uh, one of the types that's uh, allowable is what are called restored lands. And that's the type that we're dealing with uh, here in White Rica. Uh, basically, the tribe and the governor have to enter into a compact that uh, determines the parameters for how the casino will be constructed and operated. Uh, from there, the uh, tribe needs to prepare an environmental <coughs> impact report, and then the tribe and local governments uh, enter into negotiations on mitigation agreements. And uh, finally, the legislature needs to ratify the compact that was negotiated by the governor and the tribe. Uh, in this case, uh, eligible land was approved by the National Indian Gaming Commission in 2012. Uh, a compact was signed by the governor uh, last December, and uh, the tribe issued a final tribal environmental impact report last month. Uh, we're now at the place where the agreements are being negotiated with local government, uh, and that's the reason the Board of Supervisors is here today and undertaking this process. And finally, the ratification by the legislature is still pending. Uh, this is the proposed site for the casino here in Wairika. Uh, to the lower right, you'll see uh, Hibbert Field and the Siskiyou County Fairgrounds. Uh, Interstate 5 is running parallel right below the uh, bottom of this picture. And uh, the casino is proposed to be built in two phases. Uh, the first phase is a 36,000 square foot uh, casino, along with uh, 500 gaming machines, eight table games, and uh, a proposed restaurant and parking spaces. Uh, when it gets to phase two, there's an expansion of the casino uh, by approximately 20,000 square feet, and they would increase the total of uh, gaming machines to 800 and the total uh, table games to 16. Uh, there is also a proposal for an 80-room motel and an increase in the parking spaces to a little over 700. Um, under the compact with the state, the county and the city of Wairika both have the opportunity to negotiate with the tribe for mitigation agreements. Uh, which are known as intergovernmental agreements to address any of the impacts from casino construction and operation. Uh, there are four things that are required to be negotiated under the Karuk Tribes Compact. Uh, the first one is uh, the timely mitigation of any significant environmental impacts identified in the Tribal Environmental Impact Report. Uh, the second is compensation for law enforcement, fire protection, and other public services. Uh, there's a requirement to provide reasonable compensation to uh, support programs that address compulsive behavior, uh, such as uh, gaming addictions. And then finally, mitigation of other uh, public safety impacts and reimbursement to the city and the county uh, for potential costs. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, environmental impacts, this is just a, a list of uh, the main impacts that have been identified in the Tribal Environmental Impact Report as being potentially significant. And so along with these various impacts, there are proposed mitigations to uh, reduce them to levels that are less than significant. And some of the other things that Siskiyou County are look is looking at are uh, impacts of the criminal justice system, uh, such as cost to the sheriff's department, uh, to the jail for incarceration, and then for the district attorney and public defender uh, for prosecution of criminal cases. Uh, we're also looking at uh, impacts to county social services, as well as things like public transit, uh, stage access and traffic issues. The tribe is also uh, required to negotiate with the city of Wairika 
Uh, there is the possibility the city could provide both uh, water supply and wastewater to the facility since those are municipal services offered by the city. Uh, there are also the impacts of the police, fire department, and other municipal services that would need to be addressed. And uh, as for a timetable, uh, February 14th, the uh, Tribal Environmental Impact Report was filed with the state of California, and that starts a 75-day clock for the county and the city to negotiate these mitigation agreements. And if we don't have an agreement within those 75 days, then any of the parties can request binding arbitration uh, to finalize those agreements. First of all, I don't like to have my back to uh, people I'm speaking to. So is that all right if I come up there next to you to sit there and so I can see that? Okay. Are you some type of or standing up? Or, or, or sure, stand up, that would be fine. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Councilmember Tony Waddell, who's in the, our tribal uh, secretary treasurer, and our former um, council members, Sherry Sunny Davis. Uh, they're both here. And support. Um, we basically don't have a presentation, but we did write up something, and it says, um, first I, oh, I should introduce myself. My name is Michael Tom. I'm the vice chair of the group tribe for the people that I have. It wasn't in here when we first introduced it. I'm honored to speak on behalf of the tribe at this important meeting regarding our proposed casino project. I was born and raised in Marika. I'm currently working and live in Happy Camp. The Crook Tribe is one of the largest tribes in California, approximately 3,700 people. We are currently negotiating with the city and the county with the intergovernmental agreements to mitigate the impacts of our proposed casino project. We have a compact that has been signed by Governor Jerry Brown on December 6, 2013. I guess I should put my reading glasses on. I can't have art cards read my, my type. The unemployment rate of Siskiyou County is one of the highest in, in the state of California. Phase one of the casino will be a modest casino just over 36,000 square feet. It will provide approximately 300 new jobs, which will reduce the unemployment rate in Siskiyou County. Poverty is a major contributor to crime, including alcohol, drug abuse, and domestic violence, child abuse, and a variety of other social elements. With the opportunity for employment, we hope to reduce the crime and improve other social conditions. We are committed to using local vendors in the construction and operation of the casino as much as possible. The casino will be a new destination on the map for travelers from Southern Oregon to Sacramento. The Bay Area and all the way into Southern California. This will enhance, will enhance Warwick and all Siskiyou County as a tourist destination. The primary use of the casino revenue will be to mitigate the negative impacts from the pro proposed project, pay down the loan that we have to borrow money to build a casino, develop phase two of the project, and expand the supplement uh, community service programs, including medical, dental, education, and low income, and housing for our tribal memberships. We currently offer medical, dental, and behavioral health services in America, which is available to to native and non-native non -native patients. We are committed to negotiating in good faith <coughs> to mitigate the off-reservation impacts of the proposed project, and we believe this endeavor will be a positive addition to the local community. Thank you for your time, and thank you, board, for inviting us. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll bring it back uh, to the board uh, for any questions at this juncture, and if the public will get ready, I'll, I'll be coming to the public for comment uh, here in a few minutes. Supervisor Ben. Um, if we could go back to the slide that shows the where the casino is, 
I'd appreciate that. And um, show us if um, Mr. Tom would show us where the tribal trust land is and where the fee land is on that on that slide, and tell us the difference in the or one of the representatives uh, tell us the difference in uh, what happens on trust land and what happens on fee land. Because I know that there's a difference in in uh, the building of the casino on there. I'm going to re uh, re refer that question to our land manager, uh, Scott Green. Okay, thank you. So is it okay if I walk up there? Sure. Yes. So the, the tribal trust land area is right here. It's actually 202 acres all out in here, but the, the part of the parcel that we plan to game on is a triangular shaped piece right here. It's about 10 acres. The footprint of the building is about five acres. Um, this is a fee parcel. It's approximately 50 acres. Um, phase one of the project includes uh, the casino on trust land and um, parking on trust land and fee land. Phase two of the casino includes a hotel on trust land and <coughs> expanded parking on the fee land. Um, the differences on, on the tribal trust and tribal fee are that <clears throat> on the fee land, we will have to um, adhere to the city of Wairika municipal code and zoning restrictions. So we need a conditional use permit on this parcel to be able to um, park. Okay. And then my other question while you're there, I know that there's a few houses up on top of the ridge there. Are you going to remove any of those homes? We don't plan on removing any homes. Okay. And the only access in is Sharps Road? Um, currently, the only access is off the of Sharps Road. Okay. Are there any plans to have an ac another access road out? Yeah, we're planning an emergency access road out. Okay. So is that Overland over there? This is, yeah. Overland's here on the left, is that correct? That's correct. Right. Yeah, this is Overland. The emergency access um, will be through our uh, tribally owned um, mobile home park right here. There's an okay. existing dirt road and okay. it'll be paved. Okay. It might be helpful to point out the southern boundary of the fairgrounds there too for landmark. Uh, Not everybody knows. Southern would be this way mm -hmm. and the fairgrounds are Probably over in here somewhere. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll start with uh, Tom O'Brien. O'Brien from Fort Jones and you know I've only lived up here full time now about five years but you don't have to be up here very long before you realize the litigious nation, nature of the crude crime. Everything I've been reading about during these five years has damaged uh, or reduced the ability of Siskiyou res residents to make a living. 
most recently, they had a lawsuit with uh, Montague uh, Irrigation District. And then from what I understand, there's been a settlement. But through that settlement, it's not only raised a lot of expense for ranchers to pay that money, it reduces the ability to irrigate crops and pasture. It reduces the aesthetics of Lake Siskiyou. And all this is in the name of the salmon, the coho salmon. Well, I wonder what effect this project will have with the effluent into Shasta River that ultimately goes into the Klamath River will have on the salmon. Why aren't the salmon first and foremost uh, in their minds right now? Uh, additionally, uh, and this is one other thing, this is more of a general thing with California. California is fixated on revenue from gambling, whether it be lottos or anything else. And I'm fine for having that. I don't like how they promote it. Last fall, and then as for me, and I realized the long odds of ever winning the lot, but you buy a couple of bucks worth when you fill your tank, that's what I would do. Wait a few days, in the back of your mind, you know you can be a multi-millionaire, <clears throat> which maybe isn't a good thing <laughs> from the stories that you read, but anyway, it could happen. So last fall, I think it was September, I went online and found out where the previous winners were. Because I always assumed when you would see the lotto, the California lotto, where it would be up to 50, 60 million and then go down to 10 million, that there was a winner. Somebody won that jackpot. I went back six months and there have been a lot of high numbers that have gone down to low numbers in that period of time. Not one person in those six months won over a million dollars. They were all, the biggest prize was something like seven, eight hundred thousand. So California, I believe, is falsely implying by dropping those numbers that there was a big winner. Now since that time, we did have a big winner. It was all over the papers. But you only have to go online, California Lotto, and find out the past results. And again, I went back six months, back to May or April. My fingers were getting tired, you know, hitting the button, but the biggest winner was something like seven, eight hundred thousand. So what I'm saying from here is California is fixated on gambling revenue that uh, uh, the poor people pay the biggest bulk, and this is one latest step in it, I believe. Thank you. Linda Galepsi Ripley. Yeah. My name is Linda Gillespie Ripley. I'm uh, one of the chaplains for the Sheriff's Office here. <clears throat> I've been working in corrections about 22 years. I'm Native American. I belong to the Karuk tribe. And I'm not speaking for my tribe. I'm speaking for myself. Um, I was the chaplain for the Sheriff's Office in Des Moines, Iowa for some time. And we dealt with gambling. And we dealt with the uh, statistics of what gambling brings. And not only does our, does our tribe have trouble now using the money wisely of the grants we get from our government, but teaching our people how to work. <coughs> and so all I want to say is that I deal with our people in the jail system, with the drugs, with the alcohol, and if there's any gambling in other places. So all I'm saying is that I don't believe that that's the best thing for our tribe or for why we think. Thank you. Michael Adams. We'll refrain from the applause and uh, the comments. We'll just hear from the speakers if that would be okay. Mr. Adams, good morning. I'm Michael Adams from uh, Horse Creek. First of all, I'm opposed to this casino. One, it is not on traditional Karuk tribal land. It's on um, Shasta tribal land, and if the Shastas want to put in a casino, it's their right to do so, but not the Karuk. Um, I also understand that law enforcement is great, going to be greatly impacted. I understand that there is an offer from the tribe for one police officer and one police car to the city of Wairika. That does not begin to mitigate the impact. Uh, a police officer only works eight hours a day, five days a week. That leaves two-thirds of the time um, unstaffed, 
one car will not will not suffice. Um, in truth, and, and then there's the problem with housing at the jail, which is already full, staffing at the jail, which is already stretched. Um, the impact to the local community as far as law enforcement is going to be severe. They speak about 300 jobs. The way I see it is about six to eight of those jobs will be law enforcement. And if all they're going to mitigate is one officer in one car, the majority of the expense will come to the citizens. I'm, I'm opposed to that. The second part of this is that the group tribe has shown as their litigious nature is. Though they plan to use their money for expansion, et cetera, et cetera, pay down the loan, I think in the long run they will use it against us in suits. And the only way to mitigate that would be to give us 50 cents on the dollar of the gross so that we can fight your money with your money. I, I feel that, in truth, we don't need a casino in this, in this town. We're in better need of a brothel. But I, I, I know at least one person that would vote against them. Now, I don't understand why we just simply can't say no to a casino that we don't need when we're compelled to say no to something we do need. Uh, I encourage you just just to say no. If if they want to build this thing, then they need to fully fund the law enforcement, build us a new jail, fully staff it, give us all the cars that we need, pay for the maintenance, the gas, the tires, everything. Fully mitigate the damage to us. Thank you. Betty Hall. I would like to refrain from applause. I'd like to hear from the speakers so that we have a balance across the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Hall. I'm Betty Hall from the Shafts Nation, and uh, I am opposed to the casino because this is Shasta Aboriginal lands. Uh, when the group first got clearly recognized, an agent came up from Sacramento Central Office and the group told them that they had organized at the Sister County Indian Association, comprised of Orleans, Happy Camp, and Marika, as the Aboriginal communities. That is totally false. Orleans is the only one that is in the group lands, and, but it's in Humboldt County. The Sister County Indian Association was organized, started by teachers at the Atna Elementary School. And they did a summer school for children, brought in to give, they make them more aware of their history, taught them some classes, did some uh, projects with the children in the summer of 1970. And in 1971, I was chairman of the Siskiyou County Indian Association. It certainly was not a group organization. So from the beginning, everything the group told the BIA was false. I made a trip to Washington, D.C. in 1982. Uh, with, to meet with uh, the acknowledgement program there that acknowledges tribes. And the man there told me, he said, oh, he was so impressed with the Siskiyou County Indian Association that's organized by the group. I said, no, it's not. That was a Shasta, I mean, uh, uh, just an organization for all Indians in Siskiyou County, all children especially, no matter what tribe they were, uh, to help improve their uh, self, you know, to feel better of themselves and what they can uh, demonstrate to the community, and I had also been chairman of it. And I sent them a copy of the Siskiyou County Indian Association Constitution and Bylaws, but it didn't do any good. And also, the group tribe used the Shasta Treaty, Treaty R. That is a Shasta Treaty, it is not the group treaty. The group treaty is Treaty Q. And so, the base, the whole start is wrong, it's all fabricated. And if you, I don't think this board, I told you this before, you've seen the documents, you should not promote this thinker that is so wrong. They started out wrong and they want to perpetuate, they have to perpetuate that lie. That, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I can give you the documents. Oh, I had a whole lot to read today, but I know I couldn't do it all. <laughs> 
and you can provide those documents to the I will. All right, thank okay. you. Roy Hall, Jr. Hi, I'm Roy Hall, Jr., Chief of the Shasta Nation. I am against the K-Rock Casino in Wairika. As my mom just said, K-Rock tribe used Treaty R in their recognition process. That's the Shasta Treaty. Their treaty, Treaty Q, and its supplementary are not mentioned. Uh, those are ours, and they have been stolen. And that is the basis of their, <clears throat> their tribe, their recognition. Uh, also, the re I'm going to read a three-page letter here. The review and approval of the Karak Tribe of California Tribal Gaming Ordinance without the review of the Sovereign Shasta Nation is not acceptable. The document is flawed with abundant errors and omission of fact. By the Karak Tribe's own, own admission of fact, <clears throat> the 2004 map of tribal territory, they were never in Wairika area. The Karak Tribe trust lands in Wairika and Habitat cannot be truly restored, therefore unlawful to engage in gaming in either location. How does Shasta Aboriginal lands be restored as K-Rock lands? The K-Rock tribe has no ties to the land above Clear Creek on the Klamath River. They did not sign Treaty R, nor are they descendants of Treaty R signers. The K-Rock tribe has never established a legal tribal role pursuant to federal requirements. And that's something that I asked the Board of Supervisors to do, is to require a certified role from the K-Rock tribe to be a legal tribe. Professor Bright states, Treaty R from Scott Valley is a problem for him because Pro Professor Bright has studied the K-Rock language for years and he did not understand the names on the Treaty R with the Upper Klamath, Shasta, and Scotts River, 1851, November 4th. The treaty supplementary to Treaty Q clearly refers to the Karoo. The Shasta Nation will not be able to protect and preserve our cultural places. The Natural Historic Preservation Act as a national policy includes a Section 106 review process that requires consultation to mitigate damage to historic properties. As described in the National Register Bulletin 38, whenever an agency directs a project activity or program using any federal funds or requiring a federal permit, license, or approval, a Section 106 review is required. NEPA requires every federal project to include in an environmental impact statement documentation of environmental concerns. Presidential Executive Order 13007 Indian Sacred Sites ensures that federal agencies are as responsive as possible to the concerns of Native American tribes regarding their cultural places. Public Resources Code 5097.9, which mandates non-interference or free expressions or exercise of Native American religion on public lands, promotes preservation of certain Native American cultural places by ensuring tribal access to these places. The tribal Karak tribes use and the recogni recognition thereof of Treaty R as the Karak tribes treaty places in its entirety the Shasta Nation custom and culture in imminent peril of destruction. Can you finish, I guess, a little bit of that and then just leave the rest of that with the clerk for us, Mr. Hall? Uh, I'm going to finish reading it. <clears throat> We're the sovereign tribe here. I've allowed three minutes for everyone. I would prefer that you finish up a, a last thought on that and then provide that in writing to the clerk. Okay. <clears throat> The Shasta Nation is respectively asking the Sister <coughs> County Supervisor to reconsider their decision to allow k -Rock Gaming on Waikar parcels of land. In consideration of this document supporting law and the Shasta Nation treaty rights of the Shasta Nation with Fifth Amendment protections of takings of property. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morris, um, just for clarification uh, for other public comment that may come, in regards to clarifying um, our role in, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, approving this, uh, at this point, we're, it's coming before us. 
um, and we have the opportunity to mitigate for some of the impacts. Uh, short of that, what other uh, what other capacity did, did the Board of Supervisors play in, in um, this uh, project coming forward? The Board of Supervisors of the county have had no role in this project. The only thing that we are permitted to do under the compact is to negotiate on those four categories of mitigation. Uh, and ultimately, those are subject to being submitted to binding arbitration, which gives us very little uh, ability to do anything outside of those areas, and even a fairly limited ability within those areas. Okay, thank you. For those of you that uh, may have come in the room late, if you wish to address the Board of Supervisors, you'll be allowed three minutes. There's some blue cards on the back. If you would bring them up to the clerk, and uh, we'll put you in line for um, making comments. Uh, Tom Witter. Thank you. My name is Tom Wetter, I'm from Lake Chastina, and I wanted to comment today because I think there's a, uh, I'm having a, a difficult time understanding how, how this whole thing works. And the reason I'm having a difficult time understanding is, Mr. Tom pointed out, we have a huge um, issue with unemployment in this county. Our economy has been going downhill. Well, I only lived here 13 years. The whole 13 years I've lived here, uh, I've seen uh, businesses go out of business. I've seen industry close down. I've seen ways of making a living disappear. So um, I want to bring out some of the, so, uh, put some perspective on this. The, the Karuk tribe, <coughs> through, through litigation, has eliminated suction dredge mining in the Klamath River and in Northern California. Um, they've, uh, through their efforts, uh, they've stopped, um, or at least challenged, will, uh, well drilling in the Scott Valley. Um, they've sued irrigator, irrigators and ranchers in the Shasta Valley uh, and cost them over a million dollars um, and, and, and had absolutely no benefit to the salmon, uh, although that was the basis for their litigation. Um, so bottom line is uh, there's $400 million in agriculture. That's what our economy is in this county, according to the Agriculture Department. We have $400 million in economic benefit from agriculture. And um, in, in the Shasta Valley, that turns out to be somewhere around $100 million. And 240 families in the Shasta Valley have been impacted by this lawsuit against Montague Irrigation District. So um, I'm confused about how 300 potential minimum wage jobs can replace that kind of economic activity throughout the county. Uh, I, I don't believe this is uh, the right thing to do. I think that giving uh, the Karuk tribe more economic uh, clout uh, is the wrong thing to do. They've shown that, um, that they really have very little concern about the economic health of this county. Uh, what they have is, a, a, is an interest in, in tribal issues, and I understand that nobody wants to be poor. Um, but I think that the real solution for this county is an economic plan that works for everybody. That. Uh, uh, being able to share the wealth in this county is, is what's going to give us a future that we can all live with. So I, I'm against this casino. I think um, I don't think the Karuk have shown themselves to be very good neighbors, and I think that uh, their efforts have really dramatically and negatively impacted the economy in this county. Thank you, Donald Hugo. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to voice my concerns. Uh, my name is Donald Hugo. I live over in Scott Valley. And uh, among many concerns, my chief concerns have to do with crime and traffic. Uh, I was on the internet just doing some research, and uh, the California Bureau Research Bureau down in Southern California did a study in 2006 regarding how casinos impacted their communities. And uh, after a few years, they noticed there was a rise in crime rate. After 10 years, there was an 8% increase in property crimes and a 10% increase in violent crimes as compared to the non-casino counties around them. So um, this 
is something to think about down the road. Uh, there may be an unintended consequence here that uh, we really need to, to take a look at. Personally, I don't see how this project is going to enhance the quality of life here in Siskiyou County with just a few minimum wage jobs. We need, we need uh, something that's going to really, as somebody said earlier, uh, have everybody's share in the wealth, not just having the wealth leaving the county. And uh, that's, that's about it. But my big, my big concern is traffic and uh, our possibly uh, crime problems down the road. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Marshall. Thank you. Chairman Bellins will, or Tom Seth, now the chairman, and the rest of the board of supervisors. I'm Richard Marshall from Fort Jones and president of Cisco Water Users, and we're concerned about this casino coming here for a number of reasons. And first of all, we'd like to encourage the board of supervisors. We do think they have something they can do here. They can be aggressive with the issue of this casino being placed upon them. They can be aggressive with the legislature has yet to approve it and has to approve this at the end of the day. And we would suggest certain issues that the county take. One is to pass an ordinance against uh, gambling, organized gambling casinos in the county. There's one thing they can do. We would also suggest that the Karuk, as has been suggested by others, so I'll make it short, uh, don't benefit from the egregious lawsuits which have been conducted against citizens and organizations in Siskiyou County. Organizations such as Montague Irrigation District, Scott Valley Water Users, and the destruction of Klamath Dams. Uh, we suggest also that you pursue with the governor and the legislature these issues that I've mentioned and demand a thorough EIR. The EIR that's been presented hasn't adequately covered the question that was raised earlier by another person who spoke here, and that has to do with the issue of, of the water and runoff from this uh, vast facility they're going to put up. Finally, I would like to say that I have made a fairly substantial investigation of the actual work done by the Indian Gaming Commission on this in reviewing these documents, and no one's mentioned the fact that in 2004, the Karuk were turned down for this license. They were turned down for very specific reasons at the time because they couldn't make the connection between being a uh, reconstituted tribe and this land that they had acquired with HUD money, federal money, which I believe that the county council will investigate will find there's a rescission clause in the HUD agreement on the use of the funds which were primarily to be used for housing, strictly to be used actually for housing. That's one issue that the NIGC did not look at. The second issue is the Treaty R, which has been mentioned several times now, is a very important issue because in 2012, when the, commi when the commission did decide to approve it, Treaty R played a pivotal role in that decision. The reason it played a pivotal role is because they had to show that these were restored lands. These are connected somehow with restored lands for the tribe. And so I suggest that that be looked at as well under Section 2719. Uh, and finally, I would just like to say that the, uh, this issue of the commission not actually investigating the issue of the HUD money or the issue of the Treaty R or things that could be suggested by the board, should be suggested by the board that somebody take a look at it. And that's uh, all I have to say for, the, for today. There's more to be said later. Thank you. <coughs> Gary Lee. Good afternoon. Good morning, Board of Supervisors. Uh, my name is Gary Lake, and uh, I just want to be perfectly clear that I used to be a councilman for the Cutter Tribe. And um, I've heard a lot of what can't be done or we weren't a part of certain processes and so forth, and it's out of our hands and so forth. Uh, I'd just like to kind of read something why Siskiyou County people seem to always lose. Um, the reason why Siskiyou County citizens always get defeated by the enemy such as current leadership, major drug cartels, enviroterrorists, 
outside water interests, NGOs, and good old-fashioned corruption is largely due to local government. Uh, basically, that's not informed or turns a blind eye or stepped into a mess that they didn't even really understood they were stepping into because uh, I'm sure everybody comes on board to do good for the people of Siskiyou County and the city of Wairiga. Uh, tribal, there's, there's some drug trade and tribal tribalism issues that are designed to destroy the, soci the socioeconomic fabric of Siskiyou County. And it's plain, state, painstakingly clear that we have allowed well-organized traders to sabotage our plans to rejuvenate and heal this great county because of fear, greed, complacency, and political correctness. What a shame to the children we have borrowed money from and in interest have left chaos for them as they grow older. I have tremendous respect for the enemies of Siskiyou County who outsmart and outmaneuver uh, the people and they're allowing this to happen. Very very crafty. I'd like to say that we did not see what was coming after Siskiyou County natural resources and our quality of life, but we did. We were warned repeatedly, and leadership has done very little, if nothing, about it. While the enemy picked us off one by one through frivolous lawsuits and regulations emp empowered by false flags, bogus science, illegal regulation, and tribalism. Let's get totally serious. We know there are, they are basically the people that are thriving and uniting openly that are trying to destroy Siskiyou County and basically for water and, and greed. It is time for all of us to start protecting the Siskiyou County people. How so? For starters, by thwarting the Karuk Casino, a money-generating entity designed to destroy Wairika and Siskiyou County through frivolous lawsuits, tribal corruption, and the use of the Endangered Species Act as sanctioned by the very same people that are destroying America. Do not continue to be a victim, do not be a collaborator, do not be a conspirator to the destruction of this great community. Instead, be a patriot and a hero by simply fulfilling your fiduciary and moral obligations you swore to uphold when making the promises that got you elected. You have actionable information. Please contact me at your nearest convenience for a meeting of the minds and resources. Be a hero, although not fashionable anymore, It'll probably be one of the last things that you think about when you go on to the, uh, the other world, heaven, or wherever, as a great thing that you did. Um, in closing, how do we fight, how, is, how are the Karuk people, the leadership, not the people, going to fight crime in, in, in Wairika and in, in Siskiyou County when we have such a, a problem along the river and right in the heart of their territory, or their perceived territory? And hotels, they're going to build a hotel, they're just going to put another you know, local business out of business. You know, that's, uh, the Coho Salmon, that's a farce. I was there in the beginning when this whole scam was hatched as a tribal councilman. Uh, the compact, has, the old compact, had a minimum of nine pages that specifically said that the casino would be used to take out dams and basically go after water and uh, other endangered species uh, issues and to destroy so, you know, Siskiyou County and get their land back which is in Shasta territory. Uh, that's about all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have any documents that you want to leave with the I Actually, I will. I'm gonna, I revised them, and I'll hand them out to you guys later. Thank, Thank you very much. Sonny Davis. My name is Sonny Davis. I'm a member of the Coast Guard. I'm here, I hear a lot of, I would say about 100 to 1 against the, our uh, casino that's going to be built here in Wairika. But I'm not just here for, the, for our tribal members, I'm here for all people. Our unemployment rate is down, way down, and the people need jobs. And for what I see, of course I'm retired. And I worked all my life, and I see where working people are aren't here. And uh, things that are happening in the near future for our people and for all people is that there's only one way to go. And I, I see that the current people, which I hear a lot of neg negativity against them, is. Uh, we are real people. 
and we are for ourselves and for all people. And as I hear, I'm a full, full Kodak member of the Kodak tribe and I'm a full speaker of our, our language. And I was born and raised around medicine people, my grandmother, my mother, and my father. At first, I didn't pay much attention to it, but it all came back to me. Now I'm here to fight for my people and for all people that we need more jobs. We need more of everything that can turn all the people here in the Wairik area, in Sisset County, also. And I would like to express my thoughts for all you people here, invited us here, that the ones that came from the Kodak tribe. We're here to support ourselves and we're here to support all you people, even on the Council of Wairika. So, and we're here to have you make us a good judgment to, to build our casino here in Wairika for all the people. Thank you all. Thank you. Mason McCoy. First off, I'd like to throw a disclaimer out. I have no problem with the group people. I've lived and worked in Wairika area for close to 40 years now, and I've worked with and got to know several group people and respect and like them. However, I do have a problem with the leadership of the group tribe. They have been responsible for the destruction of the logging industry, the mining, and now they're working on agriculture. And that's all we've got. There seems to be a lot of question in how the groups come about acquiring this land. And I have a history book here my wife got me for birthday several years ago. The book was written in 1881. And there's lots of mention of the Shasta Nation in this book. It's all through it. I found one paragraph pertaining to the group tribe. But on the Shasta Nation, one sentence out of it. it says the Shasta tribe occupied Shasta, Scott Valleys, as well as the Klamath River adjacent to them. So the Shasta nation was in this area. This is their tribal ground. The only reference to the Karuk tribe Says the Indians known by the general term of Klamath River Indians are those that occupy the river between Shasta and between the Shastas and the sea. In other words, downriver from the Shasta Nation is where they were at. And as near as I can tell, that runs from a little bit below Happy Camp down to the Orleans area. Anyway, that's about all I have to say is I just don't believe that they have a right to build a casino in this area. If they want to build a casino, it should be down between Happy Camp and Orleans somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Radford. <coughs> Good morning. Thank you for having this public comment period for us. I'd like to uh, qualify what he was just saying to the last speaker. The first thing I did, I, my name is Steve Radford. I live here in Wairika. I moved here four years ago. I spent 30 years in Carmel Valley fighting for our rights for uh, uh, no 
building until the water was managed and the traffic was managed up Carmel Valley Road, which was, which was a little two-lane two country road. And um, the people that, be, the powers that be came in and tried to start building these mega mansions and everything. And we were still accustomed to the country way of, rural way of living. Uh, the Board of Supervisors just turned over everything we did for 30 years and let this money come in. It's money who buys the power, not the people, unfortunately. This land is of the people, for the people, by the people. It's, it's, uh, we've got to turn this back around where it started from in the beginning. We've got to get our power back. The people have to stand up and fight for their rights. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I fought for my freedom. And I'm not going to give up fighting for my freedom until I die. Every, every time I turn around, there's something else to get involved with. These days, it seems. I can't sleep at night right now. I'm, I'm up because there's so much going on. It's got my heart just pounding. I don't know how you people sleep at night, causing so much destruction in, in this county. When this is Shasta Nation. The first thing I did was read about this, the history of this area. And I continue to read. You know, um, tourism can be a big profitable thing in here. There's, there's so many tunnels up un underneath all of this land around here that if we were to safely bring that back into action and go mining, you know, we might really be productive. There seems to be a lot of gold under here still here that's, that, that I just now just recently in the last week read about. <clears throat> I'm a member of the Citizens Grand Jury which is something I am just starting to implement. Uh, come to find out I have this right to, to bring this forward. As a citizen, when I see things wrong, I can step forward and try to make them right. And I, that's, in, that's in, in my power to do this as a citizen of the Republic of California. So uh, my purpose is to make right what has been wrong. And one of the biggest wrongs I can see since I've been here, is how the Karuks ever got in power. How they ever got any kind of, what is it called, uh, uh, authority or uh, voice. I think that's a better word, voice, in this area. When this is Shasta Nation. Thank you very much for being here. Sarah Webb. Oh, there it goes again. Hi, my name is Sarah Webb. Good morning. Good morning. Um, my question to you guys is going to be about the juvenile hall that's located right next to where the casino is going to be. I'd like to know how that's going to impact the kids who are there who are already trying to escape. Um, I know with the lights and all the activities, it's going to keep the kids excited. And we have a juvenile hall that is just as full of kids as our jail is full of adults. So, um, and then another point I want to bring up is I know you guys are saying about the employment rate and you know how this, this will bring in jobs. And I understand that any large facility that comes into the area is going to bring in jobs. Um, but the problem is not the jobs. The problem is, is the people who are willing to work. And that's where we have a problem because there's not a lot of people who are actually willing to get out there and work. Um, I managed apartments for five years, and I had people who just, they'd come in, and they would all of a sudden lose their jobs, and they wouldn't want to go and find jobs, and it's not just pertaining to the Crook tribe members, it's also pertaining to any of the, any person. So I think we need to step in that direction first, start teaching the youth and start teaching people to work to have that responsibility before we put in a casino. Thank you. Thank you. Kareem Mahler. Hurry, Tom. Grab it, Tom. Grab it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Corinne Mahler. I'm from Lake Shastina. Very interesting to hear all the comments that are that are made here this morning. There certainly are a lot of legal issues that um, you could undertake, but 
I clearly understand that um, all we're here for is negotiation, and there are only four issues that you have the power to do anything about. Sadly, that's the way the federal government works today. It takes away the power of the people. That's why you have so many people here today is because they want a little power back, and you're our voice. So here's my recommendations. I want you to take this EIR very seriously. I want you, as a voter in this community, I want you, Board of Supervisors, Board of Supervisors <laughs> to really dig in on that EIR and make sure that we, the people in this community, are properly compensated for every single detriment that's going to happen. Everyone. We need a new jail, by God. By God, by golly. I just got cut out, sorry, sir. Uh, we need a new jail. I say, go get it. Don't yell. It's our tax dollars anyway. The Karooks sue us, apparently, from everything I can find out, by using our money against us. And then they bankrupt us and move on to the next agenda item. I don't appreciate that very much, but you're pretty limited in what you can do. So get out there and try not to be impotent, rather try to be active. I want you to do what's right for the people of this community. Every single little piece that you can find to do something positive for the rest of the people of this community. If the crew want to be part of it, fine. Let them jump in. But so far, all I, all I can see is, is that they're not interested in being a part of the group. They just, I heard their little speech. Everything was for them. We get this, we get that, we'll do this, we'll do that. They didn't say too much about what they're going to do for the rest of the community, how to help the rest of the citizens. You have a bigger responsibility. And I call you to order at this time to take it in your hands and take every single bit of control you can. Don't acquiesce to them. Don't acquiesce to the federal government. Do what's right for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Good, good morning. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Tom Pees. I am um, actually from Ports Valley out of Port Jones. Uh, I couldn't agree more on the EIR. The big, biggest concern that might a little. The biggest concern that I have about the EIR, and I'm, I, I, the Shasta River has been determined that it is uh, inadequate for a number of different things, TMDLs and all this other stuff. And there was just a, a lawsuit. It was it was went through, and and the crooks were uh, extremely involved in that. And right or wrong, it's it's what it is. It's cost uh, ranchers that don't have the money more money than they can uh, give up. Uh, and and that hurts. They talk about jobs. Uh, the ranchers could use the help, but they can't afford it. Uh, the timber fallers can use the help, but they can't find any timber to cut. So anyway, that being said, what I wanted to get to do, get back to, is is basically uh, the EIR. Wairika Creek is, as you know, fronts that property. That has to be its drainage source for for uh, their uh, stormwater uh, and irrigation water, whatever they use. It has to go into Wairika Creek. Uh, Wairika Creek uh, runs down as as we, in fact it goes right behind this building right here. It goes down. The wastewater treatment plant is located over, uh, right down the road here to the to the north of us. Uh, I had an opportunity. We we did some work out there at that uh, uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, some years ago. Uh, anyway, the the problem that we have is that the city of Wairika right now has a borderline inadequate wastewater treatment plant. The problem that that I see is that the perk system for the wastewater treatment plant city of Wairika, uh, because they have such an influx of stormwater, uh, is, is right adjacent to Wairika Creek. Wairika Creek goes down and dumps into the Shasta River. We all know what the Shasta River problem is, and actually Wairika Creek uh, is a coho habitat designated. Uh, what I can see is we build a casino, it comes down here regardless, it's going to increase, increase the uh, sewage influent and also the stormwater influent uh, because of the uh, parking lots. And what's going to keep them from coming in and suing the city of Wairika for uh, the water down in lower Shasta River now and lower Wairika Creek is now contaminated 
It doesn't meet the clean water standards because that's what it's all about, the clean water standards. I've got a whole bunch of issues I could talk about, but that's the one where it looks to me like we're going to do this, they're going to build it, they're going to go to work, and then the city of Wairika and the, uh, uh, one final point, the, uh, the county, because the county has a lot of uh, uh, structure inside the city, and you face sewer bills and so forth. But anyway, uh, I can see us eventually getting sued because the water in the lower uh, Shasta River, because of the influx of the Wairika Creek, of uh, being a problem. And, uh, getting sued again like like they like like we were upriver and uh, have to uh, have that fixed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Aaron Hockaday Sr. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. I don't like talking in front of people, but I sit here and listen to all you guys talk about how the tribe did this and how the tribe did that. In nineteen ninety we gave the city money to help build the sewer system that you have today. We built our housing on top of over here in Oberlin. We gave you guys a new water tank that you guys run and maintain today. We also give funding to our sheriff department to, for our local sheriffs. We also, you know, now we're trying to put a casino together, put money back into the community. Not one of you guys up here come in here and argue about how we're not gonna put people to work in this, but not one person came in here and asked, how can we help without the casino? Nobody stood up here and offered me a job today but the casino. Walmart took out our stores here in Warrenka. We have one store now. Nobody's, nobody's hollering at them. But since now the casino was trying to be built, which is going to be built, you guys are all arguing about this. But nobody sat back and thought about what the tribe's already done for the community. And it's just keep coming. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Kobe, is that right? I'm not sure. Makobi. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Amy I'm originally from Oyerika, lived down river um, for about 10 years. And I just want to say, you guys say that you read books, 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 books. I hear all this about books. Books is not our history. Really, some of it is, but you're usually taught by your people, by your own people. So some of the stuff in books that I read myself, I'm like, that's not us. That's not group people at all. And even though it's going to create jobs for us, you know, as pe as people, most of our tribal members don't have a high school diploma. So most of our tribal members probably are not going to be working at our casino. And you guys need to take into consideration it's not going to just be native this, native that on that conceit on the casino for the casino. It's going to be a minority of people. And you guys are worried about the water, water this, water that, but that's only for their own game, for their own farms. That's the only reason why it's being said like that. And then you also talk about where we're from, Clear Creek, and some people don't know their history on that, obviously. And you talk about, you know, being Native and this and this, but Native people stick together, and that's what you do, that's what you're taught from when you're a child to now. And Personally, the casino isn't even going to bring tribal members. Yeah, it will help us, benefit us a little bit, but it's not going to benefit us by far. It's not benefiting us by a landslide or anything. We're not getting anything from it as people except for our dental and our health, which we serve to non-Native Americans also. Charlesworth, I'm sorry. My name is Michelle Charlesworth. Um, I am a tribal member of the Crook tribe. Um, my father was Native American. My mother, however, was not. And I did not grow up with my Native culture. I grew up with my mom, who is Caucasian. And I only just now started working for the tribe nine years ago and just started getting my background. However, I work for a welfare program through the tribe. And as a taxpayer, you know, I would prefer that the casino be open so then we can offer jobs to the non-Native Americans because like Irene said, most of our tribe are not high school graduates and the casino is only going to hire people with high school diplomas. You know, they're going to look into that. And so that opens the door for non-Native Americans to get a job 
to get off welfare, and that will help all of us that pay taxes, you know, to not have to pay so much into the non-Native Americans and the Native Americans that are on welfare. And I think that looking around this room, I see the majority of the age group is not, you know, it's not gonna affect them for long. We need to look at, <laughs> we need to look at the age group that I am in and our kids and their kids, you know, this is gonna benefit them. And I really, I really am having a hard time with all the negativity towards our tribe. You know, I grew up white. So to have people that I grew up around and the same feelings that they have now, to have that be directed at our tribe is very upsetting. And I think you guys really need to think about how it's gonna benefit your kids. And it may have a negative look on it right now, but it's going to benefit our kids and their kids. Thank you very much for the applause, please. I'm trying to keep it on balance here. Uh, George Webb. Thanks to the board. Please bring the blue card up to the clerk. Go ahead, Mr. Good morning. Hello, I'm George Webb. Uh, I represent the uh, State of Jefferson, a movement that's underfoot in our county, uh, approved by almost the majority of our own supervisors, uh, has a majority in two other counties, and other counties are moving forward. Uh, State of Jefferson boundaries, for your information, uh, roughly uh, superimpose the Shasta Nation. And uh, you guys have heard the Shastas and their right to this land. You've also heard the Karooks and their non-right to this land. State of Jefferson is about that as well, our rights to our land. Now I've heard arguments about how the water is only for our ranchers to greedily use for themselves. But I'll tell you right now, uh, I'm a dam builder, or used to be, until I lost my whole career due to the environmentalist agenda, which the Karuk tribe backs to the hilt. That agenda is not only full of holes, it's full of lies. Now I designed projects to restore fish on the Trinity River project in Trinity County before I was railroaded out, of, railroaded out for doing what Congress mandated, restore the fish on that river. And I come up here, and guess what? Let's take out this dam up here. That's going to be good. A credible scientist came in here named Dr. Paul Hauser and said, Ah, uh, wait a minute. Next thing you know, on the front page of a Karuk publication, he's discredited and told that he's all washed up. Just like I was. Now, I've built at least two dams. I designed the projects on the Trinity River. I worked on the Trinity River hit fish hatcher to rehabilitate uh, uh, rebuild that. And this is what I get. So I don't really like the victim mentality any longer. And you guys heard from my daughter-in-law, a registered Karuk. She married into my family and she is part of my tribe. So think about her. Frank Tellerico. <coughs> My name is Frank Tellerico. I live here in Marrico, native Siskiyou County. Spent some time in the military. I think about things a lot these days on what goes on, fought wars around the world to maintain people's people's status as people. I think of uh, a lot of places in this country and around the world where these things are going on and it's happening right here under our nose. 
only have two points I want to make. One is I would like to see the Board of Supervisors in the City of Warrica as the elected people representing the people of this county petition the Department of, or the Bureau of Indian Affairs to reopen this whole hearing on the Shasta Karuk, who lives here and who doesn't. I think it would be all along and proper and this is the reason why we can't reach a decision should or should there not be a casino in in Siskiyou County. And it's, I believe, the BIA needs to learn that, hey, you did something wrong and now is the time to correct it. Because this is going to be the greatest dividing thing in this county as much as dam removal is. And secondly, if we can't get that done, no matter what you do, make sure that when you get an EIR, EIS, it's the complete build out of that casino. Not with just the one car, the one officer, and we only have this many, but when we expand, I think the resource that comes out of that casino to do that has to come out of the complete build out of what that is going to cost this community in law enforcement, water, uh, getting rid of your wastewater, getting all the things you need to make this casino a viable part of our community. It isn't going to happen if we just start, oh hey, we're paying for this, we paid for a water tank, we did this or that. That's all fine, and we're, we've got that, that's where we are. But the future is, do we or don't we have a community, if not, if this happens the way it is, we're going to have a fractured community. And that fracture is going to take a long time to heal. Thank you. Thank you. Sandra Palmer. Anyone else out there, please bring it up to the clerk. Hi. Good morning. Um, just make sure we're nervous, but <laughs> um, this is just my personal opinion. But um, I feel that there's way too much negativity. I think that if the um, board of supervisors worked with the crew tribe and tried to come up fix some of these solutions, it would be a positive thing. I'm um, with all the negativity in this community, and nobody ever wanting to move forward with anything. I mean, everything gets squashed around here. I mean, a lot of things do. And it's just like, if we don't move forward with some things, this county is not going to grow. I have children, I'm a single mom here in this community, and all my kids are already planning on moving away. I already have two that have left and won't come back to Siskiyou County because there is no jobs for them. You know, that's one of the things that is hurting our younger generations. A lot of people will move away. You know, even with me, I've, I'm employed here in Siskiyou County. I've been a hotel manager for several years but if you know like right now if this hotel closes or something happens then I'm out of a job and it's really hard to find another job that I need to live and support my family as one um, I think things need to move forward I think people need to think of things a little bit more positively and such instead of such negativity yeah maybe I don't know all the things that go on behind the scenes but this is just my opinion and what I think people should do it's not, um, you know, maybe some, this could be a good thing for our community. Think of the positive sides, not just the negative, too. Thank you. Thank you. Rex Casilio. Rex Casalio. Um, I'm handing my comments today uh, to the supervisors, which are essentially the same previously submitted to the Curb Tide, which deal with the Aboriginal territory issues and proven casino impacts. It breaks my heart to see a, a profiting position of the Selective Council few that has ripped the fabric of our regional community. Altering regional history in the interest of that council profit is and has proven detrimental to the people, economic well-being, and environment of our region. I have as much Native American blood as many sitting on the council, and am made up of as much Klamath rock and water as any here. 
I grew up playing with friends and family comprised of all backgrounds, and it is a tragedy that I find myself trying to defend one friend against the onslaught of another. <coughs> Formerly uh, one people, the pursuit of selective benefit has instead fomented regional hardship and division. Regarding the proposed casino, any such casino should be only on Karuk Aboriginal grounds. To do otherwise should only equitably happen after a vote of the Karuk people, a negotiated agreement with the Shasta tribe, and then only after a vote of the effective region approving those strategies. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Foster. Uh, I'm Brian Foster. Um, many of you know me as a city councilman for the city of Wairika. And uh, it's, it's no secret, I have opposed this since the beginning, um, since it first came to us. Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to a casino. I think Seven Feathers up in Canyonville is a great example of how a good casino can, uh, can help the community. But that casino was built on different circumstances. It wasn't built on lies. Um, we seem to have a history of lies with the Karuk, at least from what I've seen. Um, great matter of public record is actually with uh, uh, Supervisor Bennett when she was on the city council asking when the property was acquired, are you going to use this for a casino? The answer, no, never. We would never do that. Here we are. Um, you know, a, uh, a good example of um, where this might lead us and is uh, you really don't have to look any further than Susanville, California. Susanville was a thriving, mining, logging, ranching community. And now, the mill's gone, the ranching's being shut down. What do we have? We have a casino and two prisons. And who inhabits the town? We have the casino tribe, and we have the families of the inmates in those prisons. That's the base for Susanville now. I do not want to see that happen here. Thanks. Thank you. Sonia Wagner. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. This is the last speaker card that I have. If there's anyone else, please bring your uh, blue card to the clerk. Hi, um, it's actually pronounced Shauna. Shauna, I'm sorry. It's okay, <laughs> it happens all the time. Um, so I just want to say, I um, actually came to this meeting with no prior information, preconceived notions, um, kind of open to hear both sides. And based off of some of the information that I've heard, um, you know, I haven't made a decision either for or against, but, um, And I have this written down. <laughs> um, you know, I can support things that are going to help the community, that are going to help the local tribes. Um, but from some of the things that were said, the casino is only providing, um, you know, a certain like income. It's not actually helping the tribe provide uh, work, like getting their members off of welfare. As it was implied that members of the tribe are also on welfare that they only have, you know, many of them don't have high school diplomas and aren't working. So why are we, you know, considering, yes, we need businesses, but we need to promote um, businesses for everybody, you know, to help them, you know, um, how do I phrase this? <laughs> you know, jobs for everyone, not just one group or allowing one group to continue living as they are and not continue to work. Um, you know, it, yes, it will provide a small amount of income, you know, a small portion of jobs for a select few, as it said, you know, non-natives, but how does this really help the natives, which, you know, the tribe wishes to have the casino 
other than providing a monetary income to the tribe, how does it help their people, help them better themselves, better their community, and in turn, you know, better the surrounding communities around them? I said, you know, I'm not for or against this, I'm not for or against, you know, the tribes or any, you know, particular individual, but I want to make sure that, you know, it's going to help everybody and not just allow one group to continue to slide by, whether, you know, it's a low-income group or, you know, a tribe group or anybody. If, um, this issue, it will affect, you know, not just the casino issue, but you know, employment issue, it affects myself, it affects my family, I have children, um, I want to be a member of this community, of this county, and, um, you know, I want to make sure that any decisions that go out will benefit everybody and not, you know, as I said, continue to allow one person to possibly slide by. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So, uh, one of the things that I do want to bring to the public's attention is, thank you, is uh, that uh, the Board of Supervisors, uh, when this first uh, initially surfaced, uh, the, there was a written document out provided by the Karu tribe, um, and the Board of, Su Board of Supervisors put it on our website uh, so that um, there was more access for um, the public. Um, our concern has been uh, with regard to uh, public input to this. Um, that's why we're having this meeting today as well, so that we can receive that, and we will continue to receive that those comments um, as we go through this. Uh, one of the things that I think that um, I'd like to address, and, I, and I'm going to, uh, Mr. Mallory, I don't know if you want to be put on the spot or not, but you can wave it off or, or at least help me out here. Um, <coughs> One of the uh, concerns uh, that I, as a board member, have is that uh, the casino, uh, pro or con, uh, really needs to pay for itself. Not unlike when business comes uh, in non-tribal areas, whether it's agriculture, manufacturing, or restaurants, or hotels, um, there's a tax that is paid. Um, it's usually 1% of your property tax, the value, and there's even an unsecured role of 1% as well. So, for instance, as an example, uh, a million dollar investment or a $20 million investment in the Siskiyou County and non-tribal um, property and equipment um, can translate, uh, you know, $20 million will translate roughly into $200,000. That $200,000 is split amongst the county, the cities, and the schools. The schools are the largest recipient of about 68% of that. Uh, county is about 22%, and the city 6%, and the special districts in addition to the, the, essentially the balance. So that, in essence, helps offset the county general fund expenses of <coughs> jail, DA, public defender, uh, general services, general fund services for the, the county, that 22%. So uh, as we negotiate uh, uh, through the impacts that um, are going to be addressed um, to the county, we, that's a, a consideration, at least from my standpoint, that needs to be addressed, is what um, tax base does the casino bring to the county to offset the cost that will be borne potentially? Well, and we know through other uh, casino locations that there are going to be impacts to traffic, uh, criminal justice system, social services, uh, roads. I mean, there's a, a, a huge amount of impacts that are going to, going to be there. And so that's one of the things that um, we need to bring to the table and, and how, how we're going to address that. Uh, Mr. Oh, I'm sorry. And so, Mr. Mallory, substantiate, I guess, the the one percent and and how that's broken up. Um, and because, I mean, non-tribal lands, there there isn't exemption uh, from that tax that I'm aware of. Is that correct? That's correct. <coughs> there is an exemption for the improvements and land. There is an exemption for. I think you can all hear me. There's an exemption for... Can you hear me? There you okay. go. 
exemption for all of the work that's done on the actual uh, trust land. Uh, so there are no property taxes paid there. The other properties where, let's say, the, the parking that will be on fee-owned land, there will be taxes paid there. Um, in certain instances, a lot of the equipment in the casinos are owned by, um, or it's leased equipment. That's taxable on the unsecured world, as you mentioned. <laughs> Um, but many counties have agreements with the tribes uh, where there's payments in lieu made, in lieu of taxes. And that can be any, you know, the whole myriad of, of different agreements, just depending on what the local community uh, comes up with. For example, a lot of the, the housing that sits to the east and south of there, there's just a flat payment paid each year per residence, as opposed to a uh, portion, you know, an ad valorem tax uh, at the 1%. Okay. Does, does Thank work? you. That helps. <coughs> Other board members? Supervisor Bennett. Hi. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Kopsev, for bringing up the, the property tax rules. I would like to address um, a couple of comments that were made. I was on the City Council, and it was when I was first elected to be on the city council when we put in the when the land was taken into trust for the group tribe and um, a portion of that was a great deal of, of what happened up there was to benefit the housing for the group tribe the camel track had adequate water supply for the camel track but with the new development of the housing for the true tribe, it was necessary to put a new water tank up there. And that was the Krupp tribe to help the city in the payment for that water tank. There was not a, any payment for the sewer. And I was there, and I know that for a fact. At that time, it was, we asked many times if there was ever going to be a casino put there, and the answer was always no. In my research, I have found that in Butte County, there was a, the same kind of action taken. Um, a tribe came in and Butte County, and they wanted to put in housing, and they said that it would always be housing. And, and Butte County had a document that was signed by that tribe, and now they have, they have come back and, and have built a casino on that. And in the development of that casino, it was brought, that document was brought out and they said that it didn't matter. Once the land was in trust, then the tribes could do what they want. And these, these laws have been developed by the Department of the Interior and the Bureau of Indian Management and Gaming. So that's where, um, if you have problems with those kinds of uh, mitigations and those kinds of problems that's where our aim, that's where we should go and that's where we should talk about these things I would like to address the problem of jobs and the, the statement that was said that things are squashed when they come here that is not true I have been in in government for the last 20 years and have worked very very hard with lots and lots of businesses that wanted to come here. Siskiyou County has had an enterprise zone that has been very um, very good for Siskiyou County in bringing new business to the county. And at this time, the state has redesigned that because the people in the cities were abusing that. And now it is very ineffective for Siskiyou County to help <coughs> businesses. We have... Um, the whole of California is losing businesses because of the environmental rules, the air quality rules, and the other things that are happening throughout California. It's not just a Siskiyou County problem. We have many people that are on um, uh, human services programs throughout the state. That's growing. People, and I agree with the, the one uh, lady from the Krupp tribe that there needs to be more more training. But we've had training problems and programs throughout history and 
people that are in those programs go to the programs, they get paid for going to the programs, but once they're out, they don't go to work. And that's, that's a problem. We have to start with our children developing the attitude that it's better to work than it is to stay home and watch TV or play video games. That's very, very important to our, our whole of creating jobs and, and having our people be more responsible. The high school diplomas that were brought up, brought up are, that is not, that is not a problem that, I mean, that is a problem for the tribe. It is not a problem for the teachers and our school system because my children and a lot of the children that are in here went to the same classes, took the same things as the, all the kids did. And if tribal kids don't graduate, that is a parenting problem. It is not a school problem or not a problem. That is a parenting problem. And I think that, the, that it needs to be addressed as that, as a parenting problem rather than a school problem. And I'm sorry that that has happened but there's been many, many programs for tribal members that have been in the same classes as my children and others that have been here, that are here in this room. There's problems that need to be addressed in all aspects of social life. And in this, and in this life, we, we have to work together to do these things. Um, it's been educational for me to be here today and listen to everybody's comments and I've learned some things. We've, uh, we have a long way to go in the negotiations for this, this, this casino. There's lots of things that have to be addressed. My, my, pro, my feeling about this, and it has always been, that we need to take care of the people that are currently in human services programs and that will be impacted further in those programs. We need to set up different kinds of classes, different kinds of programs to address the problems that are going to be, come. Um, we have um, many things that are happening in our, in our county and some, some things are very, very negative and we all, all worked really, really hard to help with those programs and those things that are happening and we need to have some layer of trust with the group tribe that the funding that comes from this, this casino will not be used against the others that live in Siskiyou County. And I will close with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In regards to this, um, you know, in asking the, the proof travel membership here, how is the money going to be divided up, the, the profits from the proof, from the casino? Has that been determined yet? Amongst the membership. Mm -hmm. technology yeah. and it cuts out just to make it easy yeah. <laughs> to start off with we're, we're, we're a tribe that has over 3,700 people in it so there's no way that's going to be divided amongst tribal members um, the people have a failure to understand where the tribe is all the federal money and grant money that we get help serve the very low income people so that keeps our tribal <coughs> membership down here. So the money that we do make, once we pay off the loans and everything, it's going to bring our membership up here because we're going to help the social, uh, the education, the medical, the dental, and all this other stuff to help them, and plus, even help the uh, community of Wairika and Siski County. We, we don't think about just ourselves. We think about everything around us. As far as the Shasta tribe is, we try to work with them, we try to work with them. Um, they're a non-federalized recognized tribe. They're not re recognized by the federal government. 
So what do you do? They don't, they don't qualify for our programs, but we help them anyway. Thank you. Um, my concern, uh, I didn't realize it until today, but uh, they said that there's, most of these jobs aren't going to go towards crew tribal members. Um, it's kind of unfortunate, really. It's not going to go, go to me. And that's unfortunate is um, referring to the crew membership goes to uh, uh, non-native hirees will be the most that are hired. Um, I'm trying to pick up the tribe, I would hope that something would have been done to hire tribal members. That's, that's unfortunate. Well, when, once we start a good education program where we can put money into our education to help our tribal members get that education that they deserve, then it, our tribal members probably will be working in the casino. But when we first start out, since our education money is way down here at a lower level, like I told you, uh, there's no way that it's going to help at this time, but in the future, I'm going to see our tribal members being the management, top management positions. Sure. Uh, I, I thought the Siski Union School District and Happy Camp and Wairika High Schools were pretty good, but it's unfortunate they're not uh, serving the, the crews. Um, in regards to... In regards to... Uh, uh, good faith. Something that's been brought up uh, really good in regards to good faith is um, the crew leadership as members of the Klamath um, River Keepers. And in their <clears throat> summer 2013 publication, the uh, same membership, Klamath River Keepers, same membership as the crew tribe, on page five of their publication bragged on the fact that the Klamath River Keeper remained outside of the settlement negotiations in regards to the dams in order to retain legal rights so it can sue. Meanwhile, it's also its membership was uh, in good faith in negotiating with KBRA. And that lack of, of trust uh, is why one mentioned person member of the Crooks mentioned here why 101 are opposing the, the Crook Casino. Um, I work with uh, uh, Mr. Buster Atterbury on the Community Services Council. I like working with him there, pursuing the, the right interests. Um, we have a chaplain from the crew tribe that's working for the county. But from the natural resource side, that's where the crew tribe is, is unfortunately uh, shooting itself in the foot. Um, it's not the social services, it's the, the natural resources aspect of it. Um, suing the Montague Irrigation District was uh, was unnecessary. But it cost uh, well over a million dollars. It, it didn't benefit the fish. And uh, you just don't see a business move into a community suing that community and then saying, please come spend your money at our business. Yes. Just, uh, <laughs> it's not a good, it's not a good business for to do, unfortunately. Um, uh, so, you know, that, that's the reason why there is this this oh, large. That's why there's been this large yeah. um, outcry against the casino. It's not against the crew people. Nothing against the crew people. I like working oh, with Buster oh, Atterbury yeah, yeah. on the. Uh, I like working with Buster Atterbury on the uh, on the CSC. But it's the it's this balance of natural resources. It's using the kind of river keepers to stay outside the process to sue. That's really what's hurt the business, and it's, it's unfortunate this happened to a, a wonderful group of people. That's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Valens, rather. Okay, so uh, my understanding that the, the governor signed a compact, so this is already in the process, and the county's role will be to negotiate the mitigation factors that the county has a purview of, and you know, I think a lot of that is a social services aspect to it. I'm kind of curious as to uh, if we know, uh, County Council, when when does the legislation ratification process take place? Is that after we sign an agreement, or is that regardless of signing us uh, uh, signing an agreement? It's that's independent of County's agreement. Uh, I believe there's a deadline of July 1st in the compact for the, the legislature to act, uh, unless the, the tribe and the governor agree to extend that date. Uh, I'm sorry, do we know what that date is? But July 1st. July 1st. So I think uh, within that, there's you know the county's uh, 
from my my uh, point of view, the county's perspective is just to, to mitigate the the hard costs that we need to that we are going to absorb absorb because of uh, a project that's being done. It's no different than any other project that happens. You know, the project comes to mind here is the uh, reuse of the this, uh, water bottling plant that's down in South County. Those kind of things. You know, we we have to be transparent in that process. You know, we talk. You know, and I've heard a lot of um, emotional aspects to this. You know, whether we talk about tribal interests and all those other things, that's out of the purview of the county. You know, I think that's a, a something that the tribe has to, to be cognizant of. Is that you know my little back of the envelope thing is you got three to one against you. I'm thinking that's three three to one that's not going to support your casino coming to visit your casino. I would think you could find a way to kind of turn that around if you will, because like any entity, you know, I want to be I want to see success. I think when we start having success, we can find better common ground to work and move forward. Uh, however, you know, I'm, this is a learning process for me. It's learning, you know, I know I pay property taxes. I don't know if you guys pay property taxes and why it's in a fee. You know, you've got it separate from the trust and a fee. And, you know, why isn't that just all one piece of property and, and how that structure works, if you will. So for me, part of this is a learning experience. Uh, when I break it down to the, to the core, what the county has to deal with, it's, it's the, probably the limited mitigation costs that we have to absorb. I think the city of Wairika has their own mitigation costs, probably more to do on the law enforcement side than we do. So uh, we will work hard to make sure that we do everything we can to protect the county's interest, just like I think that there, everyone here has you know, a hard interest that they want to see and adhere to. That's it. Any further comment, uh, County Council or Mr. Roden? Not a comment at this time. Okay. Um, to the group representatives, anything that you wish to address? Um, I don't think so. Um, if we have the negotiations down the road, uh, when we talk with the county supervisors and so on, I think a lot of our comments have come out then and there. Um, I do want to say that that the land that was bought up on the hill was bought with high dollars for housing for the tribal membership back then. The tribe since then. We got uh, non-gaming money from the uh, gaming tribes, and we purchased land that was bought from the federal government with, with, for housing. We bought that land back for our tribe. So, and, and we did it with the approval from the Office of um, Housing and Urban Development. And if somebody made a promise that it was just going to be housing at that time, that's beyond our control. We're trying to build something for our future membership. We had to look for just seven Jennifer generations ahead, not just our generation. Thank you. So negotiations have been going on, I think, uh, currently, haven't they? And I think that um, we've been addressing some of the issues that have been brought to the, uh, uh, to the public today, even from the public. And I, and I would hope and, and encourage um, the Karoo tribe to um, seriously consider um, the impacts that the county faces. The county is not in a position to subsidize uh, a casino. It, 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 there's no money left in the county coffers. We're already down 30% from four years ago. Revenue's not growing. Um, and uh, our agricultural and manufacturing communities uh, that are here are, are struggling uh, to uh, survive and be able to pay taxes as well. So I, I guess my concern is, is that uh, we, we seriously need to begin to look at the impacts that the county as well as the city will face uh, because our future as well as what you talk about is your future, our, our taxpayers can't subsidize. The, 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 it isn't there. Uh, and so that has to be recognized um, to, to begin a serious dialogue and I would hope that uh, we would not end up in a position of, of, of I guess if, if we don't agree, there, the next step is arbitration, is that correct? Um, and, I, and I hope you know, that's going to be time and money spent uh, uh, that uh, if we are serious about getting to a resolve on what can be done, uh, that it shouldn't uh, get to that point, or at least that would be my hope. Uh, and County Council, um, would you just describe some of the impacts that we have proposed that um, that need to be mitigated? 
But in, at this point, the county is in the process of quantifying impacts. We are working with an outside consultant who is looking at casinos uh, in, in other areas and mitigations that have been provided for those casinos. Uh, our main focus you know, on county costs is the criminal justice system, but uh, we are also looking at uh, social services, uh, public transit, traffic mitigations. Uh, the consultant service is doing what has been provided as mediation for the casinos and creating a checklist for us to make sure that we consider everything that we need to address. And lastly, one other thing comes to mind that you can either verify or say that it isn't going to happen. Uh, one of the rumors out there in this build-out phase is that there will be a, a travel center, a fuel station that will uh, accompany this project long-term. Is that true? There's no travel center plan. Nothing in the plan? No. And then lastly, uh, Mr. Morris, in the, heat, in, the, in the tribal environmental impact report, it's different than the uh, EIR process, is that correct? Uh, a normal environmental impact report is prepared under California law, the California Environmental Quality Act. There are a number of procedures that accompany a normal EIR and allow opportunities for challenge. Uh, in the case of this tribal EIR, it's a very limited, uh, uh, there's limited ability for review. It's really just the governor who ultimately would have to decide uh, if it is not satisfactory, and then the state would have standing uh, to, to reject it. Uh, so if the board or if the city council has any concerns with the adequacy of the, the EIR, those things will need to be directed to the governor for him to take action. Thank you for being here today, the Kaluk Tribal Representatives. Uh, we look forward to working with you. Uh, uh, we will probably have another public hearing as this moves along. Uh, we wanted the public to be able to weigh in on this. Uh, we've been uh, asked uh, by our public is what's going on, and, and this is that first step in being able to make this transparent. So uh, I appreciate the public being here today, and I'm, I'm seeing somebody point somewhere. Can we ask a question of the county council, by chance? One quick question, sure. Yes, sir. Uh, it's foggy to me how the governor got this vote already when there's still so much question out there as to what the county or the people want. How the governor, how the governor got the vote on this? Um, I, I have a suspicion that it was the fish thing. The uh, Indian Bureau of Affairs brought it to him to push it through right away, which is questionable also. Do you know how this, yeah. could, you, could you go over how it got to his desk already and, and how it was voted on? Sure, how do you approve this? I need to get your name. Oh, Steve Bradford. Thank you. There, there's been no vote on the compact. It was simply signed by the governor in last December. Uh, in terms of how it got there, that's a matter of negotiation between the tribe and the governor. Uh, my office was consulted uh, essentially at the, the last minute uh, to ask whether the county had any concerns with uh, the process or the compact. And the one thing that was put in the, the compact to address both the county and city concerns was the requirement to enter into these intergovernmental agreements. And that was initiated by the county and the city, correct? Yes. But the public had no input on that at first. No. 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 And that's one of the concerns that we have had as Board of Supervisors, right. and that's why we're bringing, trying to bring this to the public so that you'll have more input. Okay? Mr. Meamber, way in the back. John, John Meamber, I just have a comment about Chairman Kotsef and Assessor Mallory's discussion about uh, how it's impacting the county with the tax money. Um, when I was on the RCD board about four or five years ago, I learned that the governors have been redlining the, the, the in lieu tax money from their wildlife, from their California Fish and Wildlife, wildlife refuges. The Shasta Valley Wildlife Refuge and the Mesa Refuge, I believe, is also the whole, correct me if I'm wrong, they haven't been paying anything for those properties for a few years now. 11 so, years. Years? Okay. It's, a, it's about six hundred and sixty thousand dollars a day of the county. This county system. Okay. So the that's state. a big, big impact of the county. Yes. Just like the, this tribal <coughs> properties. Well, I just learned I was here the meeting yesterday, uh, uh, brewer seminar by the farm advisors, and I was talking to the irrigator 
for the Nature Conservancy at the Shasta Big Springs Ranch. Half of the ranch has been turned over to fish and wildlife now. So I expect that they, Nature Conservancy told me they were been paying the taxes. But That's now, correct. Now half of it's going to be wrong. Well, well, and the, my understanding is, yes, the Nature Conservancy is paying their taxes on the, the, the well, bus property, sure. um, but they will continue to maintain that property, even though there's been a, um, the conservation easement has the, wa excuse me, the water per se, the obligation to pay the taxes still with the Nature Conservancy, of which they have indicated that they plan to continue to pay. Oh, okay. it, that, that's what I've been told. But and property, so far that's, and I don't, Mr. Mallory's gone, but uh, so far they have been paying that tax. But the property I'm just oh. eventually will turn all over to fish and wildlife at some time. And, and why would the Nature Conservancy continue to do that? I'm sorry, I'm hearing questions from the board. Okay, let me let me take you offline on that is what I'm being required to ask. But not, Mr. Mallory, are, did you want to say something with regard to that? No, okay. no just that the nature has continued to pay their taxes on that. They can also qualify for an exemption as well if they have chosen not to. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Looking for more questions? Well, I'm seeing a couple more hands. I'd, I'd like to make a closing comment. Oh, yeah. Can I go to the questions sure. first in case that you think be something you're going to try? Yes, ma'am, right there. Um, I was just had a quick question. Um, who did you say the city and the county had input with the governor when he, some kind of input with the governor when he signed this through? No, we, we were contacted by the governor's uh, Native American Affairs representative. Uh, who had informed me that he understood the county had no concerns with the casino, and uh, I told him that was not correct, that we did have concerns about mitigating impacts, and uh, as a result of that, uh, there was one provision included in the compact to involve the city and the county. So they gave you permission to be involved? <laughs> is something that was happening in your area? That, is that what you're saying? Yes, kind of. The reason the county and the city have involvement here is because the governor put that in compact. So otherwise, we wouldn't have. That's right. This is a matter of tribal sovereignty and direct negotiation with the state as required by federal law. And the lady behind you, I'm sorry. Go ahead. State your name. My name is Carolyn Dewar. I live in Edmonds. And I'd like to know that if we're going to have another meeting like this, why are we just focusing on what the characters want? What happens to this task of nation? Why are they not included at the table? When they get up to speak, they're allowed three minutes like the rest of us feel. These are not, these are not ordinary uh, citizens. These, this is the Saxon nation. They have rights here in this county. They should have been considered, not a three-minute consideration. Anyone else? <coughs> Did I, uh, did I hear correctly that? Um, did I hear correctly that finally IR is available for review? Is it online someplace? Yeah. It's on the tribal website, uh, www.code.us. Okay. Thank you. And then one more. I, I, sorry, the gentleman that stood up. I, I didn't quite get the question. Oh, I thought maybe the Shasta Nation would like the brothel image. <laughs> you have to ask Mr. Marshall. Uh, I think that uh, the question about Treaty R is a question that the, that the Board of Supervisors is going to have to deal with because basically they're participating in a fraud. We all have knowledge of the fact of what happened with this treaty. And I think the County Council should think about this issue and maybe instruct the Board of Supervisors at some point about how this issue should be uh, dealt with. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Hall. Yeah, the, uh, these lands where the casino is going to be built is bought 18 years after they are federal recognition. They are not restored lands. It's too much time. It's after the 1988 date. That was already determined when they tried to get uh, Christina in 1984, 2004. And uh, all the law was ignored because this new bid for a casino, uh, oral testimony was considered a 
that has taken priority over Shasta tribal sovereignty. This has nothing to do with federal recognition. We have federal tribal sovereignty before federal recognition. It has nothing to do with that. And, uh, and what this gentleman just said, you know, ignoring the Shasta Nation's tribal sovereignty in favor of federal recognition, which the Karak tribe use treaty are, which is Shasta. It's illegal, it's fraud, you are a party to it, and, you know, if it, it's something you know is illegal, and you make a decision to do it because it's the federal government, you know, it's just like saying, hey, bring the Kool-Aid. <laughs> well, people and our elders, all of our elders were speaking up. Um, you know, comments about our project are important, and there are things that we took good notes and things that we'll go back and look at. I think, um, you know, in our negotiations with the county, I think we stand ready to um, to, to mitigate, um, you know, reasonable mitigation for impacts that our project is going to have. But uh, you know, our project's a development, like any other thing, and um, it's got to make economic sense for us as well. You know, it's, it's like when you try to do a development, everybody sees the casino and they want to get their hands in there. You know, the state, um, the county, the city, um, you know, environmental firms, they're all, you know, everybody, unions, everybody, everybody wants to piece the pie. And at some point, um, it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense to go through with it. But um, I think, uh, I think we all support this, um, this project. And as far as the, the, well, everybody in the tribe does, I think. Um, so as far as education, um, what, what Brandon over there was talking about. Uh, my wife is a, um, is a teacher in our school system. And uh, I think we got a pretty decent school system. I actually, as a land manager, I help um, some of our school, some of our school, which is its own district, Junction School, uh, receive impact aid. And um, by having tribal people, they get a little bit of extra money. They get about $400 each extra because they, the families there live on trust land and they don't pay the taxes. So there, there are ways to, to help mitigate some of those impacts of, of, um, of not having to pay, you know, property taxes. Um, and uh, I guess that's about all I have to say. Thanks. Anything left? Okay. Wait, order supervisors for recess. Thank you. We're going to be meeting uh, at 1.30 at the courthouse uh, for the rest of the board session.